Hello, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you how to shoot in a church without a tripod. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to episode 54 of my photography Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, France, and I'm still traveling in the United States. I'm in my hotel room. Last week, I showed you how to use old FD lenses, Canon FD lenses, and with an adapter, and show you some of the first photos I took with it. Check out this episode. This week, I'm gonna show you how to take this photo. This was taken without a tripod, by hand, in the church saint germain des prés in Paris. Now, the problem with church is two things. They are dark, and tripods are not allowed. I can tell you in Paris, if you pull out a tripod in a church, the tripod police comes right away. So let me show you how I took the photo and how I retouched it. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So one thing I want to show you, and that's a question I get often asked, is how do you take nice photos of church, of inside of church? The problem with inside of church, and in France, we have many beautiful churches, Paris, we have Notre Dame, the Saint Chapelle. We've got amazing churches. The problem is that uh, tripods are not allowed. If you try to pull out a tripod, you get the tripod police to get right after you. So, uh, how to do it to not only get a correct photo of the inside, but also to get the, uh, you know, the grant of how it is inside. I mean, it's so big, it's so huge. How do you do it to reflect the emotion that you get when you're inside of one of these big churches? Well, this church is a church in Saint-Germain-des-Prés, very nice church, it's not as big, it's not very far from Notre Dame, and I'll show you how I did it. Now, uh, this has, you have to understand how your camera works uh, and how the manual setting is working. Uh, you will see this is a series of, um, yeah, seven photos. And if you look at it, uh, the, the settings of that photo is 130 of a second at f4, okay? But ISO 3200. Now, uh, it's very dark into a church, so I had to go up at 3,400. Now, why F4? Because F4 was the widest aperture I could have with the lens I was using. I was using the 17 to 40 lens. Uh, I was at 70 millimeter, which is the widest, shot with a 5D Mark II, so it's really wide. And um, F4 was, uh, you know, the widest I could go. Now, F4 is still, especially with a 70 millimeter, gonna give you a pretty sharp photo. If you look at it, this gentleman is pretty sharp and the back is still okay, you know, it's not super sharp, but you will see at the end, we still get an okay photo. And that's all you're gonna get with, without a tripod is an okay photo. Now, so what I did is, and why 130 of a second? Because 130 of a second is the, uh, the minimum speed I can do on hell photos. like. Below that, if it's slower than 1 30th of a second, like 1 20th of a second, for me, I get blurry shots. 1 30th of a second, if I stop breathing, I can get good shots. So what I did is I went into manual, I put 1 30th of a second, I put F4, and then I checked 1000, 1500, 2000, etc. at the ISO until I could get a photo which is a bit underexposed, but you know, that I could still see something. Okay, then I started shooting. So this is a center photo. Then I went up, and then I went left, and then I went up and left, and up again, and right, and down, okay? Actually, I should have gone, uh, added a couple of more photos, but this is what I did. You'll see it's still okay. So now, the beauty of not only shooting, let me press I, uh, for shooting to have this in manual mode is that you can do just run retouching, and then we can sync that retouching on all the photos. So here we go. Now, I'm not going to do much. I'm just going to use my standard formula, which is to open up the shadows, bring down the highlights, okay? And then I'm going to use the whites and the blacks. So press the option key, move the whites until we can see some spots, and move the blacks until we see a bit more than in the whites, okay? Uh, maybe boost a bit the exposure. All right, and then now the white balance, you see, I have all kinds of settings because of course I should roll files. If you don't have roll files, you will not get all these settings. That's one thing. And I'm gonna go straight to fluorescent. Yeah, fluorescent is pretty good. I still think it's too it's a bit a bit too much green. So I'm gonna add a notch of magenta. 
yeah but I kind of like that then let's go down the only thing I'm going to do is the noise reduction because of course 3200 boy there is noise. look at the jacket of this gentleman so the noise I'm gonna get probably around 40 yeah and the color noise around 84 okay now I took out all the noise let me bring back some of the details uh, with this I can put around like 60 and the sharpening I'm gonna put around 50 now that's my formula whenever I do a lot of noise reduction which is what I did like around 40 or 50 I do uh, about the same amount of sharpening I do about 50 or shine not more so you don't have a super sharp photo but you know it's still kind of okay so uh, that looks kind of cool and then let's go down let's uh, the lens correction I'm gonna click on unable uh, profile correction which is yeah basically just making it uh, a bit less uh, barreled and then remove chromatic aberration of course and let's do some little auto uh, on the um, on the lens correction you know on, on on the perspective here okay and that's about all I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna add a bit more clarity maybe yeah clarity is good and I think I'm gonna go for a bit more a bit more yellow and a bit more magenta look yeah because I don't I think it's still too greenish yeah something like that okay so now that I've done this um, I'm gonna take all these photos and I'm gonna click on sync make sure everything check all everything is checked and synchronized okay and now all the photos are gonna be retouched with the same fashion and I know it's gonna be perfect because I shot manual and I know each photos have the exact exact uh, you know same exposure okay then I'm just gonna right click edit merge to panorama in Photoshop so that's gonna take the seven row files and it's gonna open up Photoshop CC but it works with any version of Photoshop since panorama and I'm just gonna make sure blend image together is on vignette removal is off and geometric distortion correction is off why because uh, I find this is the best setting. Now I'm gonna put on pause because it's gonna process, it's a lot of information. I mean, each file is like 21 megapixels. So there's seven of them. Uh, I'm on my laptop, so it's gonna take probably a minute or two. So I'll be back. Okay, so this is the result of the merge of the panorama. Now you will see this is a huge file. So I'm gonna press Control, sorry, Command E or Control E on Windows to merge everything, all the layers, into one layer. Now, one of the big advantage of doing a panorama is that you get huge files. Check this out, image, image size. It is 10,442 pixels wide. I'm gonna get it down to 3,000, but that's just me because I'm doing a tutorial and I want it to move fast. So I don't need a preview and I'm just gonna press okay. And uh, otherwise, every move anything I'm going to do on it is going to take forever so let me pause this for a second okay so now I have a low resolution file so what I'm going to do now I'm going to show you a trick there's two ways you can do to uh, make this kind of straight because you see now it's it's a bit crooked so I'm going to show you two ways I'm going to show you a way if you have Photoshop CS6 and a way if you don't have Photoshop CS6 so if you don't have Photoshop CS6 what you can do is uh, make sure the ruler is on here if not go to view uh, show and uh, where is it oh here sorry it's command R it's view ruler okay once you've got the ruler I'm gonna uh, click here on the ruler and get here a little line here and a little line here okay and uh, then I'm gonna press command T so I can see that it needs a bit of rotation I'm gonna make a, a little rotation okay press enter then take the move tool I'm gonna move my uh, line here and my line here okay and press and command T okay command T again now it's pretty straight and I'm gonna press the the command key or the control key if I'm on Windows and then I can just move the corner to make this a bit more straight I'm gonna do this on both sides just to make this a bit more straight yeah something like that you know uh, maybe this a little bit more you know and the line is just a way of making sure I do it a bit natural and you know, just so it's like less crooked I don't like when it's crooked so that's one way okay so let me turn this off and the other way to do it I'm duplicating the layer again is go to filter 
and that's a better way and you go to adaptive wide angle an adaptive wide angle is going to analyze exactly the photo, you know, seeing that this was shot with a 1740, with a 7D. Uh, it, it knows everything about that photo. And then I'm just going to click here. Okay, make sure this follows this. And then I'm going to right click on it and say I want this to be vertical. So it's going to force that line to be vertical. And I'm going to do the same thing. Now see how it's following the, the crooked aspect of that column. It's pretty amazing. Okay, I'm just going to click here and then right click vertical. And you get a similar result to what I've did I've done before. Okay? That's about uh, all I'm going to do. I'm going to press okay. And uh, here we go. All right. So now, okay, I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the old one, yeah. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to take this one maybe. Yeah, this one. Okay. You get the point. So this is more straight and now uh, I want to crop this. So I'm going to take the crop tool and I want to crop it so it looks like something interesting. So I'm going to go like maybe here and maybe something like that. Uh, yeah, something like that. No, why not? Let's go. Let's go crazy. Let's go here. Yeah, just where there is the chairs. Uh, no, let's go here. Just before the column and let's go before this one and up I'm gonna go here about yeah okay now I'm missing a little corner here and that's oh sorry and also uh, on top here I'm gonna go down to here now is this is a very high revol resolution file so I mean you can still get a lot of detail on it now I, sh I have one that's something that's gonna happen often when you do panels you know you can miss a little point and I show you a little trick which is quite easy you see this this place looks exactly like this place so if I want to get this to come here and replace it I can just take the marquee tool make a rough selection around this and then I'm gonna press command J on Mac or Control J on Windows, and that's going to put on its own layer just that little piece. And then I'm going to take the Move tool, move it over here. Now it's it, it's on the wrong side. I need to make it go the other way. So Command T for free transform, right click, flip horizontal, and press Enter. So now and now I can place it exactly where I want it, something like that, and uh, yeah something like that. If it's too big, I can use Command T again to make it a bit smaller, make it fit somehow. Okay. And then I can zoom on it. And you see here, we can see there is a mark there. So what I can do is just put a mask on there. B for the brush, black as the foreground, opacity 100, or not even 100. Let's go for 50. So US, I'm painting black, a white mask. And I'm just going to make this seamless, you know, I'm just going to blend this together a bit better. I mean, you can still see something is wrong, you know, but, you know, this is, uh, people will hardly be able to tell, you know, and it's still a way to, uh, it's just a way to, you know, fix the problem. Uh, I, th I don't think much people is going to be able to see that. I mean, from big, you can hardly see anything. So that's the final result. Uh, let me get this markers out, you know. That's the final result, and that's only done without, you know, without a tripod, and, and I love the result. It's actually a, a pretty nice photo, and um, yeah, so it can be done, and that's the way to do it. Okay, guys, I want to show you something before I leave. This is my new website. It's called photosearch.com. I love the website. It's got my photos in full screen as you come into it, and then you can go here to tutorials, and on tutorials, You've got different panel, package, individual training, raw files, tutorials, français, in French. The whole idea is package, this is where you get the best deal. The first package is my full workflow from shoot to retouch. That is a three hours course of just, you see me, how I shoot the photo. It's actually filmed. I took a cameraman that followed me everywhere and uh, in Paris and Israel, and you can see me shooting how I set up my camera, the photos that I get, and then back to Lightroom and Photoshop, how I retouch it. This is really how I work on a day-to-day -day basis. The other package is The Art of Black and White by Jean-Michel Beretz. Uh, he's one of the most acclaimed photographer and popular on black and white on the planet. He's in galleries everywhere in the world. 
selling like crazy. He's got over eight coffee, big coffee table books out. And he revealed after 20 years of work, his workflow on how to make the most amazing black and white you can think of. Check this out. Then here's another package, where, which is 60 Lightroom 4 or Lightroom 5 presets to give unique looks to your portraits or your fashion shoots. And then there you get my full Lightroom and Photoshop tutorial. And what that is, now what's the difference between the full Lightroom Photoshop tutorial and the workflow package is the Lightroom Photoshop, the Lightroom and the Photoshop tutorials is really to learn Lightroom and learn Photoshop. The workflow is really how I work. So if you want to learn the software, this is where you go. You go to Lightroom or Photoshop or both. And this is where you get the best deal. Because normally this is over the full Lightroom and Photoshop tutorials is over 15 hours of courses for $63, 15 hours of courses and maybe 60 raw files. It's, I, it took me two years to do them. You get everything for $63. So I think it's a good deal. And uh, the difference between my YouTube channel is that I go much more into deep into it and I give you the raw files so you can really follow along. Now talking about the raw files, if you want to have the raw files of the church we just did, you can jump to raw files for podcast and in there you will get uh, the possibility if you, uh, let me give you an example on this episode for example, you click here on more info uh, on the episode 51. If you want to, to get that raw file, all you have to do is click and share to get the, well this was to get a preset but it's going to get the six raw file. So you share this make sure you refresh your screen and you will get a link here to download the photos I've used in that episode if you want to try this church panorama at home. Voila, thank you very much and let's get back to the room. Okay, so I hope you like that tutorial. If you like this type of photography, there is one person who is a master at this and his name is Klaus Hermann. He just did an ebook on making vertoramas, which is like panoramas, but up and down, uh, mainly inside of church or beautiful buildings. You can see some of his work here. He did an incredible ebook. It's a bit less, I think it's around $20. You should really check it out because you will learn how to make panoramas HDR. He's got an amazing workflow. It's very clear and I love the result. Check out the result. Okay, guys, thank you very much for being there and I'll see you next week.